Now I'm going to show you what he had to say in his message that wasn't live stream that clarified his stance on biblical marriage just to make it that much more confusing who has said that Christians need to rethink what the truth is. We need to re-examine it and create a better truth that is more inclusive within Christianity. Kind of insane. There is no middle ground. There is no quieter middle space. You are for or you are against the truth. Hey, I just want to say real quick, we got some of our new merch out right now. This is one of my favorite shirts, Read the Bible. If you want to support this channel, you can check out the link below. It says shop our merch. Howdy y'all, I'm Brylan. Now, there's been a very interesting update, to say the least, to a video I just did recently. Now, before we get into that, let's all say hi to Shire. Okay, that didn't, I thought she was... Shire, come on. There she is. Oh, look at Shire. Oh, you sweet girl. Oh, she's a lover. Now, very quickly, before we get into this update, I want to lay the foundation for what I'm about to show you. Please don't miss this. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 6, starting in verse 14. Check this out. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Now, unequally yoked, that's a term. It means don't be allied with or hitched to or identified with unbelievers, those who are rebelling against God. It goes on, for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness or what fellowship has light with darkness. You can't have them both at the same time. Verse 15, what accord has Christ with Belial? Now, this word Belial here, it's being used as a name for what accord has Christ with Satan. Belial means destruction or worthlessness or treacherous. What accord does Christ have with these things? These very characteristics of Satan, he has nothing to do with them, as we shouldn't have anything to do with hitching up with unbelievers. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't speak to unbelievers. We don't have any contact with unbelievers. We absolutely should. But we should be an example of the truth. We should be an example of righteousness, not unrighteousness. We should be an example of the gospel, sharing and spreading the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection. But for those who go on rebelling against Christ, for us to hitch ourselves as believers with unbelievers it is a very dangerous game to play because you will be the one that loses. Now, I recently did a video called This Famous Pastor is Evil. And this is a video showing a conference that Andy Stanley recently held at his church. It was called the Unconditional Conference. This conference here, it already happened. It just happened a few days ago. And you can see here's Andy Stanley. It's being held at North Point Church, his church. And I went over all the speakers. And we're going to get into this a little more again in just a second. But I did a video pointing out how Andy Stanley is doing wildly unbiblical things, saying wildly unbiblical things. And I'm not the only one that is pointing this out. Uh, tons of Christian creators on YouTube have pointed this out. Like my boy K-Dub here, he did a video as well pointing this out, Mark and Avoid Andy Stanley. You'll also see my good friend John here, the Gospel of Christ channel. He has called out Andy Stanley for his unbiblical statements and stances. Also, Vision Unsealed has called out Andy Stanley quite a bit for good reason. Now, recently, even Albert Moeller, this was just a couple weeks ago, before the conference happened, uh, he called out Andy Stanley for hosting this conference. And he, he said here, the train is leaving the station. Andy Stanley's departure from biblical Christianity. Now you can go read this entire article here, which makes a very good argument from Mueller. 
on how Andy Stanley has departed biblical Christianity, which he absolutely has 100%. Figure out how to get straight people as excited about serving and engaging as the gay men and women I know, we would have a volunteer backlog. A gay person who still wants to attend church after the way the church has treated the gay community? I'm telling you, they have more faith than I do. They have more faith than a lot of you. And the fact that Jesus didn't believe that good people go to heaven, that doesn't necessarily make it true. That's just what he taught. And that's what he said. And clearly it's what he believed. Now, Andy Stanley has been called out for this unconditional conference, again, by dozens and dozens of Christian creators and Christian leaders. But there's been an update of Andy Stanley responding, I guess, if you if you can even call it that. We're going to get into why this response from Andy Stanley is kind of insane. Andy Stanley affirms traditional view of marriage following controversial unconditional conference. Okay, quite convenient for him to have a conference, which I'm going to show you some more details about that if you missed my last video or haven't seen any of the other dozens of videos on it. But Andy Stanley has now come out and made a stance for biblical marriage. On Sunday, October 1st, pastor and author Andy Stanley addressed swirling speculation about his stance on LGB marriage during a service that was not live streamed. Now we're going to get into the significance of that in just a second. In the comments Stanley made Sunday morning, he publicly affirmed the traditional view that marriage is meant to be between one man and one woman while also emphasizing the need for compassion for those with LGB identities. Now, what was just said is not inherently wrong. That doesn't mean we shouldn't have compassion for those who identify as LGB. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every human being is a sinful, wretched creature that needs the blood of Jesus to wash them of their sins. And it doesn't matter what sin you throw in here, we all need to be covered by the blood of Jesus. We should not be hateful. We should not be unloving. We need to be loving. We need to be kind. And we need to share the truth. But that's where the problem comes in, is that just sharing the truth just sharing something that goes against current social narratives like truth is anything you think it is, then that's considered hateful. Sharing the truth, no matter how lovingly you share it, is hateful. So that's where the problem comes in. You, even if you love someone and sharing the truth with them, it is still considered an act of hate. Prior to Sunday's worship service, the pastor sent out an announcement explaining that he would be addressing why the church hosted the unconditional conference on Thursday and Friday and that there wouldn't be a live stream of the service this week. All right, this was sent out to North Point Community Church. Hey, everybody, you may have heard about or been asked about a conference for parents North Point Community Church is hosting on September 28th and 29th, the Unconditional Conference. A great deal of misinformation has circulated regarding the purpose of the conference, and I do not want you to be misinformed. So on Sunday, October 1st, we're taking a break from our regular programming to talk about the conference and why we elected to host it. In light of the subject matter, we will not be streaming the services online on October 1st. Now, it's interesting to me that they're going to pause live streaming. So Andy Stanley being called out by dozens and dozens of Christian creators and uh, Christian leaders, pastors, decides that he's not going to stick up for a biblical view of marriage on a live stream. So it doesn't go out to too many people. Within the last several years, he's been more unashamed about his view of getting rid of the Bible. We don't need the Bible. When we preach and teach, instead of citing the Bible, 
we just drop back and say, John, an eyewitness of the resurrection says, Paul, who steps onto the pages of history as someone who hated the church says, 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 says, all scripture is theonistos, it's breathed out by God. So the, the origin of scripture is from God. The Holy Spirit of God carries people along to write what they write. And it's interesting. So why don't we just cite the people that were carried along? We can't start with the Bible says the Bible. I mean, you can, the Bible says the Bible says the Bible says, but here's the thing. Everybody else now knows what else the Bible says. It, it, it's So now I'm beginning to spit and match on the six day creation, young earth, old earth, Levitical law, homosexuality. I mean, it's like, oh gosh, you know, we're, the issue is who is Jesus? That's the issue. And if you get that straight, the dominoes start falling in, um, you know, good directions for the most part. I think the only way we can get there, Andy, is by saying the Bible says. No, we, Bible, we don't have to say that. If I, if I could finish the thought, the Bible says that Jesus rose again from the dead. That's no, how it actually know. doesn't say that. That's how you know Jesus rose from the dead, because the biblical witness gives you that testimony that Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, that Bible is where you get the message that Jesus rose again from the dead. Both no, it's, it's not. <clears throat> well, explain so that, Andy. Explain that. Well, what do you mean by saying the Bible doesn't say that Jesus rose from the dead? <laughs> because the Bible doesn't say anything. John did, Moses did, David did, and that's in the Bible. Did, Paul did, but it was only in the Bible once it got put in the Bible. That's incoherent. And well, literally bashing the Bible and instead teaching things that are more in line with self-help, being the best you can be through worldly man-made wisdom, which is no wisdom at all. So it makes you wonder why doesn't he want to live stream this to share with those who aren't going to be able to be at his church in Georgia, but still would like to hear, hey, Andy Stanley, what's going on, buddy? Now I'm going to show you what Andy Stanley had to say in his message that wasn't live stream that clarified his stance on biblical marriage. We're going to get into that in just a second. But if you remember this conference, Unconditional, you're going to see that Greg and Lynn McDonald, they are the founders of Embracing the Journey. Again, they put on the Unconditional Conference, which is hosted by Andy Stanley at his church, North Point Community Church. And when you look at the speakers of this conference, this is what everybody's pointing out, is that it is filled with speakers who are progressive, affirming Christians. And you can see here that Justin Lee, I've showed you his Instagram page in my other videos, but he is a self-proclaimed LGB Christian geek who writes books. Another speaker at this conference is David Gushy, who was very outspoken about how he changed his views on LGB and Christianity and how he is affirming and accepting now. And he is a very outspoken, progressive, liberal Christian. You also have the Kazis as well. And then Brian Neitzel, you can see his name right here. Another LGB, openly LGB Christian who has said that Christians need to rethink what the truth is. We need to re-examine it and create a better truth that is more inclusive within Christianity. And then I want to point out here that they say that this conference is coming from the quieter middle space. So they're not taking one side or the other. This is the middle area. Even though this is far from the middle, you have openly LGB Christians that are speaking at this conference trying to tell parents that they need to be affirming and accepting that there is no other answer, but it's just the quieter middle space. And this isn't just about LGB. This is about Christians' new identity in Christ and repentance of sin no matter what that sin is. I just want to remind you what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 30. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. There is no middle ground. There is no quieter middle space. You are for or you are against the truth. Now, there was a transcript of what Andy Stanley said in this service, even though it wasn't live stream, just to make it that much more confusing. Regarding marriage, and this feels weird even to say this, just make sure everybody knows where we are. We talk about marriage, or we talk about and teach about marriage the same way Jesus and the apostles did, Stanley said. Every instruction in the Bible regarding marriage references or assumes a husband and a wife a man or a woman. So biblical marriage, he added, biblical marriage is between a man and a woman. We've never shied away from that. 
We don't change the words in order not to offend people. Again, it's interesting to hear Andy Stanley talk about biblical marriage and what the Bible has to say. And because Andy Stanley's been a huge proponent of attacking the Bible. No, we don't believe in the resurrection because the Bible tells us so. And the question is simply this, but Andy, okay, I get all that. But Andy, the Bible is how we know about the resurrection. Actually, it's not. My, my, and I'll, we'll talk about this for a few minutes. And you can talk bad about me after I leave. You have permission to do that. My, my intention and my heart's desire, because I think you're uniquely qualified to do this, is to begin from now on, for the rest of our lives, in our preaching and our teaching and our writing, to tether the faith of this next generation to the event of the resurrection, rather than the authority and the inspiration, the infallibility, or even the inerrancy of the Bible. Stanley concluded his message by sharing how he has sat in small groups of LGB men and watched them sorrowfully cry because they couldn't have a family the way the Bible teaches. Stanley added that some of the men had prayed for God to change their orientation, but God didn't answer their prayer, resulting in them choosing a celibate lifestyle. Stanley then said that for other men and women, that is not sustainable, so they choose LGB marriage, not because they're convinced it's biblical, but because they choose to marry for the same reason many of us do, love, companionship, and family. And in the end, as was the case for all of us, this is the important thing. I want you to hear me say, it's their decision. So he's making the point that they chose to get married even though they think it's unbiblical because they don't want to be alone. It's what we desire, so we should act on it. And it's just their decision to do that. And we should accept that and accept it into the church. You know, it's not that difficult to see the hypocrisy coming from Andy Stanley here. He's making a case saying, no, I am for biblical marriage, but also I am for them making this decision because they don't want to be alone. And what's the big deal, really? And then hosts a conference that has openly LGB people trying to advocate for all Christianity, all Christians, to enter into this same atmosphere of accepting their decision that Andy Stanley claims that they know is unbiblical, but they do it anyway because we all desire love and companionship and family. But if you looked into these speakers at the conference, you would see that they don't think it's unbiblical. They make a case for it being biblical. So Andy Stanley, again, is trying to play both sides. And that's why you saw him not live stream this message because he hopes it doesn't get out to these people, but he can save face with his congregation. Andy Stanley's in the middle, all right. And that's called lukewarmness. And in Revelation, the Bible talks about how those who are lukewarm will be spewed out of God's mouth. He goes on, our decision, he continued, is to decide how we respond to their decision. Our decision as a group of local churches is how we are going to respond to their decision. And we decided 28 years ago, we draw circles. We don't draw lines. We draw big circles. So what he's saying here is we draw big circles. We broaden, we widen the space of Christianity in order to accept those whose lifestyles, again, this isn't LGB exclusive, we are widening Christianity to accept those who are living in blatant sin. And remember, the Bible says that the way is narrow that leads to life. The way is wide that leads to destruction. Andy Stanley has decided to make a wide way. Stanley said, if someone desires to follow Jesus, regardless of their starting point, regardless of their past, regardless of their current circumstances, our message has been come and see, come and sit with me. Now, I agree with this. It, you don't have to get to a starting point before you're a Christian. You're living your life exactly where you're at in your sin and Christ impresses on your heart. Come to me. And when you are born again, you become a new creation. But that's where it stops with Andy Stanley. When you come to Christ in your sin, the message is come and stay who you are. Again, a very dangerous game Andy Stanley's playing here. We aren't condoning sin, he concluded. We are restoring relationships and we are literally saving lives. It doesn't get, I mean, the irony here is so 
thick that it's it's quite sickening. Uh, Andy Stanley is claiming that if we unequally yoke ourselves to the world, we are saving their lives, even though what you are doing is condemning them to eternal damnation, quite literally not saving their lives. Don't fall for this. This is Andy Stanley walking in circles, wide circles, again, to try to appease everybody. And this is who Andy Stanley has been for years and years. Don't fall for it. Andy Stanley is dangerous. Oh, hey there. What's this? You didn't ask? Well, this is my Ion Layer NAD Plus patch. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't want to be all salesy sounding. You know, this is a patch I wear. It's called Ion Layer is the company. This is an NAD Plus patch. And I, I want to show you what it is. NAD Plus is an extremely important coenzyme in our bodies that helps restore energy levels and gives you endurance. You know, NAD, if we were to run out of NAD, which is naturally occurring in our bodies, then we would be dead within 30 seconds. That's why it's a good thing to make sure your NAD levels are high. And so you can get a patch from Ion Layer, which helps NAD levels in your body to rise. Because again, as we age, your NAD levels get lower and lower and lower. And that's what causes this loss of energy and this inability to perform and function properly. Now, if you want to check out NAD for yourself, you can use the code Brylin, just my first name. Type in Brylin under the promo code on Ion Layer to get $100 off your first order. And you can check out the link in the description below. Use that link to go check out Ion Lair. And again, use the code Brylin to get $100 off your first order of NAD. It will radically change your life. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. And please hit that subscribe button. Join this community. I would love to hear from you regularly. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button, you know when you like this video, it'll get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread this message. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.